you can probably hear me better. Thank you. I'm, I'm not used to being up here and speaking that much, so forgive me for t- not turning my mic on when I was supposed to and uh, taking a minute to get ready here uh, to go, but I want to... Um, My Bible doesn't, there it goes. It, it was giving me some trouble working there for a minute, but it, we got it done. So, um, our, my lesson today in my talk, letting you know what we did and some of the things that happened in Warsaw. You heard Monty this morning talking about all of the things that EEM has done in Ukraine and other places all over Eastern Europe. And the partnership between us and EEM and what God does through us, using us to do his work, can be quite amazing. And I don't think you can really understand it unless you've personally been involved and seen it because it changes so many things about your perspective as to what God does and how he makes his kingdom grow. Our camp was about an hour drive north of Warsaw in a village called Sea Rock. It is kind of a place where people go to rest and encourage each other. It was a very different camp than what we've normally had in that we were in a facility that is not a campground. It is a motel. The name of the hotel was Tan To Do's. Okay. There we go. There, that's That's the facility that we were in. Uh, We were two kids in a room. The facility holds about 120 people. We had 126 all total. And we had the entire facility to ourselves, which was kind of nice. But on the other side of it, we had to be careful because we had two kids in a room with no adult in the room with them. So we had to have hall monitors to make sure that they didn't escape and go running away on us. Okay, there we go. Uh, the basic theme I've touched on and Monty touched on fairly often, I think, in his lesson. Our theme was, we do it together. Our team, the kids, EEM providing us with the Bible to hand out to everybody that we gave them to, and God. Without God, none of this happens. We welcome the children, and once we welcome them, We had the resort lock the gates. It was a fenced property, which was kind of nice because, again, they couldn't get out and run away. And we had quite a variety of kids in our camp that we were working with. That is our first group meeting for everybody that was there, us, parents, kids, Whatever you can imagine, this, is, this was our group. And so this was our first morning, all gathering together to talk, to sing praise, to have a lesson, and to do our work. Every morning at 7.45, we had exercise class. For all of those, it's been a while since you've been in school and had to go to PE or gym or whatever you called it. We got out and had 15 minutes of jumping jacks, stretching exercises, 
get the blood flowing so we would be ready for our day. This was my class. And I'll tell you in a little bit about the different classes. But I've got to tell you about this group of people. And the gentleman on the left up there, his name is Bogdan. And if you were here for Monty's presentation again, Bogdan was the gentleman who was baptizing the two girls in Monty's presentation. And so Monty and I had not talked about this before, but it kind of ties together because we all do work together and God works through us. But the other thing I want you to know about this, because when I got ready to go, they told me I was going to be teaching a class of adults. They said it was going to be probably a group of men and women, most of them with very small children, that they needed to be with their children in the class rather than be separate. Well, things changed. When we got to camp, I was supposed to teach with a lady named Sue Ann. She took the ladies, I took the men, and their wives. And it was a very different class than what I had anticipated and prepared for. All three of these men in this picture up here are preachers and their wives. And so they should have been teaching me instead of me teaching them. But at the same time, we had some very good discussions because these preachers are men, they're human beings, their wives are human beings, just like us. And they are all refugees from the eastern part of Ukraine. If I remember correctly, Bogdan was from Dnipro. Next to him is, well, sitting in front is his wife Olga and their daughter Sophie. Next to Bogdan is Julie and Yura. Yura, if I remember correctly, is from Donetsk. And then you know who I am, I hope. Next to me is Ina. I have known Ina for 20 years. I met her the first time we went to camp on the first day of camp. That day she brought her little daughter, who is named Lyra. Lyra is now 22 years old and was a member of our team. It's amazing how God brings his family around. Next to Ina in the back is Svetlana and Sergei. Sitting in front with the blonde hair is Mila. Mila was my translator. I met Mila the first time I went. We went to her office, which was the Ukrainian Bible Institute, and I can't remember which way it went, but either we were taking Bibles to her to put in her warehouse, or she was giving Bibles to us, and I think it was the latter, for our camp. And the Bibles, way back then even, were provided by EEM 20 years ago. That would have been in 2004, so I guess 19. But the story, I met Mila back then, and she remembered me. There were a number of people who also remembered me as the camp went on, that I had met years before, and God brought us all back together. This group, is it? no, that's the same one. Okay, this is Sasha and Zhenya. Sasha is in the back next to me, holding Timu. Their daughter, Lyra, is in front. Zhenya is his wife, holding Renata. And I thought this was amazing, and I thought you should really know this, because Zhenya delivered Renata one week prior to the camp. And Zhenya was in camp working with us, carrying this one-week-old baby. The work that people do 
when they love God and the effort they put into it amazes me. And unless you meet these people firsthand, it's really hard to imagine what goes on in their mind. But this reminded me back to the first camp I ever made to Almighty Kazakhstan. Two of our translators were um, Ira and I can't remember her husband's name. But they had just gotten married and they came to camp. It was their wedding party, their honeymoon. And they came to serve God. So God is great. You never know what he is going to do. But I want to tell you more about what we did while we were there. This is the hotel where we stayed in Warsaw, just so you kind of get an idea. This is the house where most of the refugees live. It has 18 bedrooms, two kitchens, I think four bathrooms, storage rooms. There are 40 some odd people living there, all refugees. All paid for by one of the congregations over here. And I'm not sure exactly which one it is. So, but it's amazing what goes on. Towards the end of camp, after we got back to Warsaw and we're staying there, we went out to that house one night and we had a barbecue while the men cooked back in that tent where you can't see. The ladies that were with, me, with our group were having a ladies' Bible class for all of the women who couldn't attend camp that live in that house and belong to the church. And so it was quite interesting what they have accomplished. And through the work and through EEM and these ministers, they have started a church in Warsaw that has about 80 members so far. And I can't remember how many baptisms they have had since they started it about three or four months ago. And it has grown from roughly 40 to almost 80 people in the meantime. And they continue to study and invite and bring people in to talk to them. And then the kids had some fun. And kids always have fun, even in camp. And so I thought it would be a good idea to show you what some of the kids did and some of the joy that they have in spite of their situation. And then the last day of camp, I introduced you to Timu a minute ago. Sasha was holding him. Sasha had his second birthday. And we got to celebrate his birthday, and that was part of the bubble. So anyway, that's a good overview of our camp. And then we said goodbye to everybody, and always saying goodbye is difficult. Translators that we've worked for or worked with, there were at least four people that I had known for 20 years that I renewed acquaintances with that were in the camp that just amazed me at what was accomplished. I also want to tell you that two of our translators, as Monty referred to some of the people in his video, two of our translators were from Kharkov, their apartments were direct hits by rockets from, from Russia. Kharkov's only 15 miles from the Russian border. It's easy for them to target residential areas. And talking with them, over the time, there were lots of times of crying and deep discussions and struggles about the issues that they have to deal with. Both of them struggled with the fact that they had no home to go back to. They had nothing but the clothes on their back. In at least one case, their pets were gone. In another, their pets were able to survive. They got out with the pets. 
but it's just it's a very tragic situation. And so saying goodbye to all of these people was a struggle. But I know that someday, whether here or in heaven, we will all see each other again. Our lessons were very loosely based on the fruit of the Spirit. And that's why I asked Nathan to start our service with that song for the kids this morning, and I know we don't have a lot of kids, but we should all be kids at heart. You know, kids are special. They really are. But we started out with creation, and the story of the creation of the earth, and the story of the creation of man, and we took an approach that said, If you were creating the world, how would you make it? And started that as a topic of discussion. Well, as we went through camp, some of our kids took that. And I want to show you a video that our kids put together while they were, while we were at camp. They actually put this together in one afternoon to talk about what God's creation was. We've shortened it up because it was almost eight minutes long. I think Nathan said he got it down to about three minutes. So Nathan, if you want to go ahead and start that. That Lana, Sergey's wife, is a theater teacher. She worked with the kids to put that together. It's hard to condense the story of creation into three minutes. <laughs> so thank you, Nathan, for getting that done for me. I could have never done it on my own. The rest of our lessons were followed more along the fruit of the Spirit. And by the way, we had two lessons a day. Each day we were there, about two hours each lesson. 
Our first lesson was love. The story of the Good Samaritan and doing what is best for others. And when you think about the group that I was teaching, I've got three ministers and their wives that are refugees that have lost their home. Trying to love other people can be difficult. But God loved us even when we were evil, when we were bad. He didn't throw us away. He didn't throw us out the door and destroy us. He loved us. We talked about responsibility. And each one of these lessons, by the way, took two hours, so I'm really condensing them down. <laughs> the story of Esther and how Esther saved her people. The story of your friend and who it is. And the entire book of Esther, but I wanted to read the one part that always has got me. Esther 4.14 If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but what you have come to your royal position just for such a time as this. None of us know what God has planned for us. We just need to step out and do what he has told us or put in front of us to accomplish. Courage. It takes a lot of courage to do what God calls us to do sometimes. It can be scary. I can't imagine the fear in the hearts of the people I was working with every day of having to lose their homes and leave their families. Many of them left brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, grandparents, people that didn't want to leave Ukraine. So the story we based it on was the story of Daniel and the fiery furnace and talking about things that scare me. Well, there's a number of things that scare me, but the things that they told me about were way more than I can ever imagine. And so, whatever you do, if you have the courage to step out and take God's lead, and do what he calls you to do. My experience and my belief is absolute in that God will provide everything you need, no matter what it is. He will provide all of the tools, all the resources, all the funding. If you step out to do God's will, he'll take care of it. He always has. He may not do it the way we think he will, the way we want him to, but it always comes out right in the end. We talked about respect for other people. The story of Ruth and Naomi and how Ruth respected Naomi to the point where she went back to Israel with him. And we talked about us from America for those from Warsaw seeing Ukraine as our extended family because we love the people of Ukraine. I've made 14 trips to Ukraine. There's a lot of people over there I love. And although Monty didn't name many of the people that take care of taking things to the war zone and going in, I want to mission, mention one that just started a new church in Dnipro. There was a church in Dnipro three years ago, but most of them are now in Warsaw. 
So some of the men, ministers, took some of the money. I don't know. I assume that EEM was probably part of it. Somebody over here funded them to start a new church in Nipro. They've already got, I think, 20 or 25 people in three months, and they've had several baptisms. The people are open. And when you give them the Bibles and they read the Bible for themselves, they see what God's Word says. And so these are some of the lessons. We talked about kindness. The story of David and Mephibosheth. And read. There we go. Second Samuel, and I know it says chapter nine up there, but I'm going to read from tw- verse chapter twenty, verse fourteen. Because this is where the story of David and Mephibosheth begins. Show me unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness as long as I live so that I may not be killed. That was Jonathan's request from David before Jonathan died. When David became king, the end of the story is he goes looking for somebody that he can use to honor Jonathan. And he found one of Jonathan's sons named Mephibosheth. And he was kind to him. He brought him into the palace and sat him at his own table. We're told to be kind to others in the same way. We talked about patience and the prodigal son. We're all prodigal sons. We all struggle with our lives each day. It's hard to be patient with people who are not being nice to you. But the father in the story of the prodigal son was patient and waited for his son to come home. And God is patient with us in all the things that we do, all the things that we should do that we don't. It's two-sided story. We talked about having peace in the times of trouble. The story of Jesus calming the storm out on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat. His disciples were going crazy because the storm was raging. The boat was filling with water and they were going to all drown out there in the middle of the lake. Christ, they woke Christ up and he said, what's the matter with you guys? God gives us peace just like he calmed the ocean and gave them peace. And when we see the peace that he brings us in spite of the trouble that we're experiencing, it is a wonderful experience because it's a peace that goes beyond understanding. We talked about having joy, and again with David. If you read through all the Psalms, David had joy in spite of the struggles. Saul tried to kill him. Absalom tried to usurp his authority and take over as king. There's many stories that David tells about going through. And so I want to close today with reading from Psalms, if I can get my Bible to work here, come on, come on, there we go, Psalms chapter 86, I'm going to read verses 1 through 8, and this is a prayer that David wrote. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant. 
Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you. Lord, no deeds can compare with your deeds. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, for this opportunity to you've given to me to talk about the work that we did through you, or you did through us in Warsaw this summer, for the camp, for the children, for all of the translators from here, for, for those from Ukraine, from Kiev and Lviv and Kharkov and all the other towns. Father, thank you for the blessings that you give us. May we always be thankful and know that you can do more than we can ever dream or imagine. Christ's name we may pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesse, for sharing your